This is a video I can't wait to bring to you. We're here at Buckingham Palace. We're in the Royal Mews and it goes to prove all that glitters is gold. Stick with us. Have we got some things to show you here from the Royal Mews, including right near the end, this, yes, in person, the coronation coach. So as you can see, the Royal Mews is open every year and it's open till October. But the brilliant news is buy a ticket for here. You can convert it into an annual pass and you can come back as many times as you like during the year. Anyway, we're gonna kick off in the stables and that horse you just saw, that one, Meg, gray one, was actually pulling the coronation carriages for King Charles's coronation. Right, let's start off with our first coach. So our first carriage is this one, which is the semi-state Landau, and it's one of several similar coaches at the Royal Mews. Now the Landau became popular during the 19th century as it could be used both in town and country with the hoods open or closed. This carriage was a particular favorite of Queen Victoria, and today the semi-state Landaus are regularly used for official and ceremonial duties with new appointed high commissioners traveling in them to meet the present king. Now I love this one. This is the Queen Alexandra State Coach. It was built in 1865 and it was converted into a glass coach in 1893 for the Princess of Wales, later Queen Alexandra, who was the consort of King Edward VII and she used it for social events until her death in 1925. Now I can tell you all about that red table in just a second, but since 1962 this coach has carried the Imperial State Crown, the Sword of the State and also the Cap of Maintenance in its own procession, which travels before the King's carriage during the state opening of Parliament, so it's used every year. So when the Crown and Regalia is travelling to Parliament, it's actually entitled to a household cavalry escort and also a royal salute. And the crown sits in the coach on that cushion, well, on a crimson cushion, which is lit by an electric light, and it sits on that table right there. So you've got all the crown jewels traveling separately in this coach on the way to the House of Parliament every year, and it gets a salute. Absolutely incredible. Don't you just love royal tradition? And also what we want to bring you with each of these is all of the fine detail, not just the crest, but look at all of the different things on the roof. Absolutely amazing, all the different crowns. And of course, you've got the crown there, of course, representing the state crown, which of course it now carries. And then what you've got is the plastic is actually keeping the material preserved, which is held on the back. Our next carriage that we move on to is the Irish State Coach, which was exhibited in 1851. Just look at the detail on it, it's absolutely incredible. Anyway, it was exhibited in 1853 during the Great Industrial Exhibition in Dublin, with the hope of attracting the attention of Queen Victoria and Prince Albert. The coach was purchased by the royal couple, and after the death of her husband, it was often used by Queen Victoria when she no longer wished to use the gold state coach. In 1876, when Victoria was proclaimed Empress of India, she had the frieze added to the top of the coach, which looks absolutely incredible. And it includes the Palm of India among the Rose of England, the Thistle of Scotland and the Shamrock of Ireland. Then, in February 1911, whilst undergoing restoration for the coronation of King George V, the wooden body of the carriage was destroyed by fire. It was rebuilt on its classic chassis in 19 weeks and took part in the coronation procession in time. Right, how are you enjoying these? Time to call out one of the big boys. It's this one, it's the Diamond Jubilee Stagecoach. And if you think, wow, that looks vaguely recognizable, this is because this is the carriage that uh, the King and Queen, King Charles and Camilla, took to Westminster Abbey for their coronation. The frieze around the top of the carriage features the national emblems of English rose, Scottish thistle, Irish flax, and the Welsh leek, carved in Australian beech, wood, and also gilded. Doesn't it look amazing? So the central panel is the royal coat of arms, but with it you've also got the collar of the Order of the Garter on both sides. So the Diamond Jubilee State Coach is the newest coach in the Royal Mews, and it was created for Queen Elizabeth II to commemorate her Diamond Jubilee. And it was conceived of and built in Australia by a team of builders over there and former employees of the Mews. The coach is postillion driven. That's by a groom on each pair of horses and is almost five and a half meters long and over three meters high. And the weight is over three tons. 
It really is a beautiful coach and you can see why King Charles took it to Westminster Abbey. Now the brilliant thing is, as you're going around the Royal Muse, you get a guide telling you about all the stuff that I'm telling you about. But one of the things you've got here is a feature so you can actually imagine yourself inside the coach. And this is what you can see from inside the coach. And how lovely does that look? We're back outside on the Royal Muse looking at more of the stagecoaches and this one is the glass coach and this was used by the Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother to go to Westminster Abbey to her wedding with the Duke of then York which was going to be King George VI in April 1923 and then many years later it was used again for a royal wedding that of Lady Diana Spencer and Prince Charles at St Paul's Cathedral. Now just look at the detailing of this handle absolutely incredible but what it also signifies is you can't open the coach from the inside so the only way you can get out is when a footman opens the door for you to be able to get out incredible this is the Scottish stagecoach. Now, this was originally built around 1830 and was acquired by Queen Mary in 1930 in 1968 the coach was converted into the Scottish stagecoach and the Royal Arms of Scotland and the Order of the Thistle Insignia were added to the coach panels the crown you can see is a fiberglass copy of the crown of Scotland and the roof has got two transparent panels inserted which makes the interior much lighter. Now Queen Elizabeth II travelled in the coach whilst in Edinburgh to attend the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland in 1969 and 2002. The coach is also used in London during state processions and in 2006 the coach featured Queen Elizabeth II's 90th birthday celebrations at Windsor Castle and the Royal Edinburgh Military Tattoo. Now we're going to come back to stagecoaches a little bit later and have we got the big one at the end for you just like when you do the tour. Anyway here is where they keep all the bits and pieces that the horses have round them all spick and span. Keep them all tidy, keep all the brass all shined up and also do a lot of replacing of the leather as well. So these are all the bits that are used by the horses. Right. Now we're going to go into the old stables and here you've got a whole load of other types of carriages including this one which you can get in and have a royal wave, just like Jaden's having a practice of here. I think he's mastered it, you know? I think there's royalty to come. Now, this was the old stables, and above each of the different bays, you've got the name of the horse and the year in which the horse was born. as far as stables go I've seen some pretty bad ones in comparison I tell you this is a pretty good one so if you're a horse that was bought up here wow right we're also going to have a look around at some of the other coaches that they have in here as well including some mini ones and also if you think Rudolph visits Buckingham Palace every year he does and they've got the sleigh here ready for him Now the carriages we'll see in here are very very small ones and the first one we're going to look at is at this one which is the Brougham carriage. Now this is really small and believe it or not it's got a front glazed window so the passengers can see forwards but it's also easy to use on town roads and it's still in use today to take mail between St James's Palace and Buckingham Palace just up the mall. This one is a miniature of the first carriage that we looked at and was presented to King George V. This carriage here is from Queen Victoria's reign and it was used around the gardens, you know, to transport around and have a bit of fun in. And it's said that the Queen's children used this around the back of Buckingham Palace. Really hope you're enjoying our video here of the Royal Muse at Buckingham Palace. And if you are, you know what you need to do. Give us a thumbs up, will you? And also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you do need to do that as well. The Royal Mules Tour is just one of those things that you probably don't even realise exists. But to come in and see all of the carriages that we have done, walk into this old stables and see loads of bits that are going on in here as well is absolutely incredible. Also, one bit they didn't have open, but we're going to go back and see them, is they have some of the royal cars that they use as well, but they didn't have any in that time because they were being used across the country. Now, one of the other bits you can do in the stables here is they've got some of the royal livery. So as you can see here, you can try them on and then get in that stagecoach, have a royal wave and look the total part. 
earlier, don't go anyway, because we've got the big one for the end. And here it is. It's the coronation coach. And if you switched off and didn't listen to me, well, you're not going to hear this message anyway. Right, so this was used most recently by King Charles III as he left Westminster Abbey to go back to Buckingham Palace. And he had been crowned in Westminster Abbey at that time. And this is the coronation coach. And just look at the detailing on it. It's incredible. Now, this coach weighs four tons, which is absolutely vast. So you can see why they only used it for one part of it, because to maneuver this coach because of its weight is quite something. But just look at the detailing on the panelling. The artwork on the panels, both this side and also around the back and on the other side, which you'll see in a minute, was done by the Florentine artist Giovanni Battista Caprini. The coach was designed by the architect Sir William Chambers and the coach is 7.3 metres long, 2.5 metres high and 3.9 metres wide and it's drawn by eight horses with a postillion riding each pair. So once again, that's someone riding one horse every pair. You might be able to see here, but the wheels, the rear wheels are angled outwards. And this means that each spoke hits the ground at 90 degrees, which is best for taking the weight and the strain of the four ton coach. Due to the weight of the coach, it never travels faster than walking speed, which is why you have people walking at the side of it with a groom walking beside each of the horses. Now, because the coach weighs over four tons, can you see that handle there? So you have someone walking behind the coach and that is the brake, but it takes quite some time for the brake to take hold. So the person who's walking behind has to know how quickly to put the brake on to stop the coach at the right time by twisting that handle. Oh, and for complete accuracy, it takes 27 meters for the coach to actually come to a standstill. So you really have got to know what you're doing. Before the coronation in May 2023, the last time the actual coach was used was back in 2002. And being a gold state coach, it's got all the grandeur and it's really, really big and it's heavy. But to sit inside it, apparently it's one of the most uncomfortable coaches that you can sit in. If you cast your mind back to the coronation of King Charles in May this year, you'll remember that actually it was a very short journey from Westminster Abbey down Whitehall and then down the Mall back to Buckingham Palace. But the furthest this coach has traveled was when Queen Elizabeth II was crowned back on the 2nd of June, 1953. And it did almost five miles around London. And even though the weather was absolutely dreadful on the day of the coronation, the Queen and Prince Philip didn't want to disappoint anyone. So it did the five mile route back to Buckingham Palace from Westminster Abbey so everyone could see the glory of this coach and also of course the new queen. And is it me or is that Boris Johnson back there? I wonder where he disappeared to. Right okay to our final place to have a look at and this is the training yard. This is where they bring the horses in and get them all trained which takes it years to be able to take the coaches because they need to be of a certain temperament and this is where they do the training here at the Royal Muse Riding School. So what did you think of the Royal Muse at Buckingham Palace and did you realise they were open? And I've got to ask you, what was your favourite coach? Do let us know in the comments down below. It will be really interesting to see. Now, if you enjoyed that, we're going to take you to a royal palace in London that not many people get to. It's Kensington Palace, where Queen Victoria spent most of her time. And the link to that video is in the top right hand corner. See you in there.